Good morning from Banda Arche. Yeah. Good morning. Oh wow. Oh. Siapa? Bole Satu? Uh, maybe Lante Dua? Fadas Lante Dua? Yeah, yeah. Sound good? Dasini, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Alright, this is our setup. So you've got a little cooking thing in the front there, a little preparation. Then you've got the big oil synced up to the gas cylinder here. And uh, this thing's big, yeah, you can tell from the bucket that this wok is about triple the size of the bucket. And that's where all the deep frying happens in there. And then draining here. And uh, what have we got here? More chicken. I think they're ready to be fried in there. And uh, this is eggplant. So it looks like I'm going to get chicken, eggplant. This must be the batter. Looks like it goes one, two, three, four. And then uh, into my stomach. So here's the workstation. You can see there the fried chicken. Uh, waiting to be served up there. Some cucumber. And uh, that looks like fried eggplant. There as well. Give me a good one. Oh, it crushes it a little bit. Oh, it just kind of flattens it there. Adding the secret sauce there, the mystery sauce, to make it nice and pedas. So I've gone for level two out of five. So a little bit spicy, but not too much spicy. And uh, we'll take a seat. Looks good. Makasia. Alrighty, let's check it out. So we got your usual Nazi putti white rice there and this is some uh, fried eggplant and some fried chicken it looks like I got a little bit of chicken thigh there I think and then your hot sauce look at this this is almost when you zoom out the sauce is like almost the central part of the meal here and I feel like I'm just gonna really pour sweaty because there's no air con there's no fan and there's no air coming through so I reckon um, I'm going to take my time here, and uh, but I'm very, very curious. All right, I just want to get a basic idea, so I'm just going to shovel in a bit of this, just get some of the flavor, see what I'm dealing with here. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Hit you quickly. Oh, wow. That's spicy. I said level two. Wow. That's pretty hot. So 10 seconds in and it's pretty warm. I'm just gonna eat some eggplant because I think that uh, that may keep this getting hotter and hotter and hotter. A little bit of eggplant here. I've never eaten eggplant here. In fact, what I've noticed when I've seen some eggplants here, they're not like an eggplant in the West. It's kind of fat like an avocado. I've noticed that the eggplants here, maybe there's something else. They look like an eggplant. They have the purple and they have the stem there, but they're shaped more like a zucchini or more like a cucumber. Um, so I'm not sure what the difference is. This looks a hell of a lot like an eggplant though. So I'm just gonna eat some of this. Mm. Nice and fried. Very nice fried. It's actually really tasty. That's good. And the spiciness has gone down. So this kind of chili seems to just kind of hit you and then dies quickly. Because sometimes with the chili, it can take one or two minutes and it keeps getting hotter and hotter and hotter then eventually peaks and you're like <gasps> and the hotness is coming out of your mouth like this you know? but this looks like it's pretty calm this looks like it's pretty relaxed it seems that there's a bit of an initial burst of heat but enough that it's okay so I'm taking a big lot now no problems some cucumber to put out the fire They've got some waters on the table here. I'm not sure what's going on with them. I'm not sure if it's complimentary or if I just take one, I'm not sure. I'll just kind of ask. All right, we have got this under control. I could have gone up to a higher level, I think, actually. I reckon I could have gone up to a level three or four, but I won't get too cocky, right? Look how much pleasure can you get in one basket. Look at this, this must be kilo of little chilies and these little things are creating a lot of padas. Look at those. So I was just talking to the girls here <clears throat> that uh, work in the shop and they were saying they get this fresh every day. This massive container of chili and they use all of this in just one day. It's 
crazy. It's so much chilly. <coughs> so you see, this dude just showed up on his motorbike here as a takeaway order. This seems to be normal. Every minute or two, someone else comes, gets some rice, some chicken, and they disappear. It seems to be unusual to eat here. I'm the only person actually eating inside. All right, I've got through the eggplant and through the rice. Mouth's pretty warm, but manageable. And I've left the chicken last. So I reckon this will taste really good. I'm gonna pull it apart here. All oh, right, so oily. That. It's very fried. You know what? I haven't eaten KFC for a long time, but it just tastes like KFC. So I'll dip a little bit in the uh, magic sauce, right? Mmm. Brings it alive. It's really tasty. Well, this is my notepad, and this is how I learn different words in Bahasa. And uh, I'll just spend the next half an hour maybe just sitting here and just trying to memorize some of these. And maybe talk a bit more with the staff here to get a little bit more practice. And of course, every restaurant has a cat. All right, I've reached the location here. We have the uh, museum, Tsunami Arche, and a very impressive building. Look at this. Really uh, big and modern looking building. Of course, this tsunami and the effects of the tsunami are almost indescribable in magnitude, especially here in Arche. So almost 230,000 people died as a direct result of the tsunami and about 170,000 of those were here in Indonesia with the vast majority of those here in Arche. So December 26, 2004, there was an underground earthquake uh, just off the um, west-north kind of coast of Sumatra and uh, it affected 14 different countries. Uh, when I say affected, it means uh, people were killed in 14 different countries. Of course, Indonesia uh, had about two thirds or three quarters of those, so they were the worst affected by far. So I'm really curious what they'll have inside and uh, what they'll show and uh, uh, the stories that are told. No doubt a lot of personal stories will be told, so I'm uh, looking forward to reading these. To get in hand, let's uh, see what's inside. Wow, obviously a police helicopter. So this place was opened in 2009, so just over four years. February, so it's over four years after the uh, tragic event here. Here are a series of picture frames showing uh, some of the raw experiences that Indonesians had uh, during this tragic time. And some of these setups here just kind of give you a sense of what it might have felt like looking uh, into what was happening. And this one in particular, because if you think about the tsunami, these waves were around 15 to 30 meters on average. That's around six levels or 12 levels of an apartment or office block. Imagine those crunching over and over and over again. All you have is just water and debris flying everywhere. So that gave a really good feel of what it was like. And here are some images uh, from the aftermath of just things everywhere. The water had just pushed cars, household belongings, just anything that there is was pretty much uh, washed away. So I spoke too soon. Um, that was really well curated because what happened was you go in and it's dark. And you're in this room and you can just see, I've got footage of it, but I think you can't even see what's going on. He's got names, uh, this room that kind of goes up and gets narrower and narrower towards the top with a small window on top. It's like a kind of upside down ice cream cone and with names all around and you walk around in circles uh, in semi-dark for some time. And it kind of gets you into this mood. It kind of snaps you out of your everyday life worrying about where will I go next? Where am I gonna eat? What am I going to do? What's this? What's that? This, this. Kind of gets you out of that a little bit. And then they bring on the more personal stories and uh, 
a lot of footage and this kind of stuff, so you can really take it in. And I found that I think because of that first bit where they kind of snapped you out of your your everyday streak, I think I was able to better absorb and better to emote um, with the material that was presented uh, in the museum. So it's really well set up. It's really good. I think it's a, a positive thing to come and see it and to kind of pay your respects, but also just to understand maybe what happened uh, during that time, at least from a, a post-event situation. If you've spent some time in Indonesia, you will know that Aceh is very famous for its coffee. You'll often see uh, many cafes, larger cafes with uh, the coffee beans, with Aceh written onto the Hessian bag there. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go to an authentic cafe here in Aceh and enjoy some coffee. So I'll make my way up here. If I can read the map correctly, I would say it's up here and kind of on the left. So I'll walk up here and um, hopefully we find some nice Arche coffee. All right, it's been fun walking and trying to stay dry. But good news is we've found our destination. And that is Mr. Sultan Salim Coffee. And oh wow, it's a big place. Look at this. I thought it was going to be uh, just like a small dude on the side of the road. I didn't realize it was going to be so big. But I'm kind of happy to sit down and uh, have a coffee, have a drink of water maybe, maybe a milkshake. Uh, let's see what they have. One thing I will note is that Indonesians are pretty clean people. There's always this at the entry point. And if I was in uh, many other countries in the world, I wouldn't be eating street food all the time. Right? But here I eat it at least once a day. And it's because I know they're clean. They wash their hands, they wash the benches, uh, they wash everything, everything's clean, they've got good hygiene. I think it's the religion that taught them this. And uh, as a result, you can let your guard down a bit. You don't have to be too paranoid, germaphobe style, right? But it's super busy in here. Keep the dudes up there, having a cigarette, playing games on the phone, some girls catching up, having a bit of a chit chat, lots of tables. And of course, like every Indonesian cafe, a couple of cats just kind of roaming around doing their own thing. Maybe uh, coffee with milk, cold coffee with milk. Uh, looks good to me. I think a little bit of milk, like one quarter. Yeah, and then they have some snacks as well. And I tell you what caught my eye, satay pisang. The gentleman was just telling me that there's a tiramisu flavor and a this flavor, and it's like, oh, wow, I'm sold. So can I have one satay pisang and then one uh, kopi susu, susu thingies? Perfect. Well, this is very exciting. Let's have a look at what they're doing back here. Oh wow. It's a bit intense. Um, I just to have here. Yeah, thank you. What they're doing here with well, the coffee beans. And I think I'll get some. Uh, I'm gonna get some water. Oh, I'm so thirsty. Oh. Bole. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, thank you. I forgot that in Australia you have to do everything yourself. But here, uh, service staff actually do things. It's fantastic. <laughs> oh, thank you, sir. Thank you so much. All right, let's find a seat. There's some tables up there. Oh, these look nice. Let's go out here, a bit of fresh air. So, as usual, they don't have something. Um, so, no satay pisang. Uh, What's on the other side? Oh, well, same thing. Uh, what well, looks good? Oh, goodness, it's all so heavy, isn't it? Maybe I even get an omelette. Uh, oh, bakso crispy. Oh. We still don't have it. I don't have that one? Do you have omelette? Yeah, we have. Okay, can I have omelette? Okay. Perfect, thank you. I still haven't adjusted to this whole thing of not having stuff up on the menu. And uh, I just need to uh, remember, and every time I go in somewhere, instead of thinking I can have what's there, first of all, ask which ones do you have, which ones are available. Because I understand that not all the ingredients are always here, maybe they're relying on someone else, and these things can be complicated to have such uh, an amount on the menu. So I understand, but yeah, I have to remember now, from now on, I've got to ask, what's available? What do you have today? Because otherwise, this happens pretty much every time you go out it's pretty much guaranteed and this is like a menu with like one or two things and if it's like a specialty like earlier on when I had the uh, Geprek Ayam Geprek uh, Jogja 
they only have one thing, right? <laughs> so they've definitely got it, otherwise the shop's not open. But uh, so like here, I have to remember to ask, which ones do you have? So like everywhere in Indonesia, these guys are getting right around the World Cup. So you can see all the country flag there, and a gentleman just asked me which one's my country, and there it is. Beautiful Union Jack with the Southern Cross there. Probably won't be the country's flag for much longer, but at least for another decade or two, it probably will be. And he said, if you want to watch here, they have the big screen so you can watch here. So I don't know my way around Aceh too well yet. I haven't even been here 24 hours, but it's nice to know there's a nice, comfortable place like this. And I really love the setup. I really love how it's open. You don't really need aircon. You just need fresh air. I think aircon's kind of overrated. I really prefer this open format because it's cool enough, right? You see a bit of a breeze coming through. I find that going in and out of air conditioning all day is very bad for your immune system and your body never adjusts. But I find that as you spend hours and hours and hours in the heat as a bull air, I start to adjust now. I toughen up, I sweat less. I don't think it's so much that it's hot and my body just adjusts. Rather than going into the freezing cold air conditioning, boiling hot outside, your body never kind of adjusts, right? And your immune system kind of starts to struggle. Alrighty, here we have. Some, uh, there we are. Salt in Salim coffee. It seems to be a real institution, this place. It seems to be a very famous local place to hang out. You can see here the boys, four of them. They are just gaming like crazy. You can see they've got the electricity plug here, and they are going for it. So I think I've just got a whole lot of complimentary stuff. He's just dumped his stuff with me here and asked me, have I been to Sapang? And I'm thinking about Sapang because it's a little island kind of over there. I'm thinking about going over at some stage and um, I think I just got a whole lot of complimentary food. All right, I got myself some Aceh coffee. I have to be honest, I think it's probably just <laughs> I don't want one of the little packet things, but that's okay. Um, I can feel it's very warm here and cold here. I love how they did this in Indonesia. So they have the hot drink, and then instead of serving it cold, like you would in a lot of countries, they just put the ice in there. So the ice can slowly melt and cool the drink down um, to get this sensation of hot and cold. So here it's hot, here it's cold. Um, it's cool. Oh, wow. Sangat Manisya. Super sweet. I feel like I'm just drinking sugar. Uh, luckily, I am a sweet tooth, so for me, it's good. I feel like Indonesia is the country of sweet teeth. I think people here just love the sugar because everything seems to be loaded up with sugar, yeah? So, anyway, so this gentleman, bless his soul, came up and said, have you been to Sepang? And then he showed me, uh, this is what you'll get in Sepang. So, there it is, I don't know what it is. I didn't order it, they're just being nice. Um, so I'll take a bite here. See what it's like. It's cold. Hmm. This is interesting. It's got the eastern rice bun, it's like a rice. Oh, what do you call it? Red bean. Sorry, uh, red bean paste inside, with the more western kind of baked outside. It's like a an east meets west kind of feel to it. I'm not sure the history of this dish. I don't even know what it's called. I'll have to try and find out. I'll ask him. Uh, in a moment what it's called but um it's a nice little snack and it's not dripping with oil or sugar so it's like uh, my heart can just have a rest all right my omelette which i kind of forgot about actually because i've been busy eating these snacks my omelette has arrived and it looks like it has some maybe some hot sauce on top i got no idea what that is but cheese on top if you had told me before i came to indonesia that i would start eating cheese on almost everything i'd be like why not what is that for but uh they make it work and uh, I'm really looking forward to this. I'm very curious about what's going to be inside, actually. All right, let's get this first taste going. Ta-da! So that sauce is actually quite sweet. It's like a sweet chilli sauce, actually. So you have sweet chilli. You've got spring onions in there, in here, and then the cheese on top. Some um, interesting mismatch. I love when you have a number of different contrasting flavors going on um, it's a very interesting situation all right so my boy just gave me some of these I don't know what it is let me get that in focus there Shemalan Sahat Sihat 
and it seems to be, I don't really know, but um, it's fried and it looks good and obviously I'm going to eat it. Oh wow, oh they're all slimy and wet, really moist, I don't know what it is. Alright, let's go. Spicy. Mmm, sweet, sticky and spicy. I'm in heaven. No, they're so wet. <laughs> Mm, these are really good. They're kind of like a chip. They're almost like a chip. You know how like Pringles are like kind of a different texture to normal chips? Um, it's kind of more like a Pringles texture. It's kind of like a softer chip. And then with slimy, sweet. And geez, these are really good. These are delicious. Hello. Chimadan Sihat. Man, these are actually good. Like most things I eat, just say I'm here, right? In this place. Whatever they give me, I'm gonna try. Right, if I haven't seen it before, I'll try it. And usually it's okay. Yeah, maybe it's kinda nice, kinda not, average, normal. I'll have it again, maybe not. But this is something I would really buy again. This is a great snack. I'm a bit scared to ask what it is. I assume it's, it could just be rice. I've got no idea. I haven't heard of the phrase Moorish for a while. This was big about maybe 10 years ago. Oh, it's really Moorish meaning more-ish, so you want more. So this is like an ish, okay, more-ish. Oh, these are really more-ish, I want more. These are more-ish. I just wanna keep eating them, these are absolutely delicious. I'm really surprised. To be honest, uh, you know, I'd like to mix some chocolate and maybe some cheese in with this as well, but uh, these are really good. All right, time to pay. Um, I'm really curious about what that was called. So obviously that chip thing at the end was the best, but the other thing was interesting with the red bean uh, inside as well. Uh, oh, there's that boy there. We've got to get this guy here. He is the star of the show. He is the man that gave me the extra stuff there. Hello. Oh, how much? Thank you. Yeah. Oh, excuse me, sir. Um, I'm sorry to interrupt. Yeah. Those uh, round things from uh, Sampa, no, Sapang. Uh, what are they called? We call it Bapia. Bapia. Yeah. Is the name there or no? No, it's not. That's kind of traditional cake from Sabang. This one. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah. How, how do you spell that? Bapia. B A P A T I A. Pia. Bat Pia. Okay, perfect. Thank you, sir. Thanks for your hospitality. Oh man, what a superstar, man. Thank you. I was about to say goodbye to you guys, and I thought, you know what? I'll go for a bit of a walk. Jalan Jalan, because I'm just eating so many calories. Like, really, you put food in front of me and I eat it. And this is a worry for my stomach, as I want to fit into my clothes. And uh, I was walking, and look what I found here. A nice little food park. Now, of course, it's not quite open yet. They're just kind of cleaning up, because it's been raining so heavily today last couple of hours, a lot of rain, they're just cleaning up a little bit, but I reckon on another evening, not today, I'll come back here. And this is like it's going to be a fun little place. There's even a horse here. Check that out. So there's a horse here, he looks happy. These guys look happy, and I think that uh, if I come here on another night, I will also be happy. In the meantime, I will find myself an ungod, and I will go home. If you enjoyed this video, click like for me. Because if you click like, I know that you liked it, obviously. And I know to make more videos like this one. And if you want to see more videos like this one, just subscribe to my channel. And you can see many more videos about me traveling through Indonesia.